Hey, I'm Trey Lopashinsky, and I'm joined by Councillor Gord Colossum for Council Corner, where twice a month I meet with a member of Council to chat about ongoing topics discussed in the community, as well as items from recent Council meetings. Today is mainly just topics coming from the most recent Council meeting. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gord Colossum, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Uh, getting right into it, I wanted to talk about some NCLGA resolutions that Council decided to submit, but before we get into that, we were talking before we went live here about you're the perfect person to talk about the NCLGA. What's your history with the NCLGA? Well, I'd like to go back and talk about me being a perfect person. <laughs> talk about that. But yeah, I mean, you know, you asked the question about NCLGA and, and it's, it's, it's interesting to me because I think the, the community looks at council and, and uh, they see what we do in council meetings and, and in the community, but uh, sometimes they don't realize all that we're involved in outside of the, the community advocating for our community and other, other forums. And, and so NCLGA is one of them, North Central Local Government Association. Um, I was on their board uh, for several years and, and was president a few years ago of, of the association. Uh, in fact, Tony Zabinski, one of our councillors, is on the board now for the association. So the NCLGA basically is is the it's the association of local government um, local governments in the North Central Region, which is in its name, um, and that that area it's amazing because it goes actually from Hundred Mile House on the south to the the, the Yukon border in the north, and all the way from Haida Gwaii on the west coast to uh, the Alberta border. So it, it ends up being about seventy percent of the province that, that the NCLGA covers, and so we are part of that. We are a member of that. And we've been very actively involved in that. Um, it's one of five area associations in the province. So there's one on Vancouver Island, one Lower Mainland, one in the Okanagan, one in the Kootenays. And those five area associations um, represent, of course, the communities and local governments within their areas. And they are involved uh, and become part of UBCM, which is the Union of BC Municipalities, which represents all of the local governments across the province. And so we, we get involved, and, and, and primarily for, for advocacy, um, it's like any association that, that, that you might belong to. We, we, there, there's strength in, in being associated with others of, of the same kind. And so, you know, for the North, North Central Local Government Association, we have over 40 local governments, uh, members of that. And, uh, and, and so we, we support each other. We, we add strength to, uh, you know, there might be another community that, that is advocating for something or needs something. And, and by being part of that association, we can help advocate with them and add that strength to the argument. And that becomes very important for us with local issues. And, and you mentioned a few of our resolutions that are going forward. Um, we, we will take those to, to NCLGA, AGM and convention, and uh, they'll get discussed, debated and, and voted on there. And, and then it, it moves forward as a, as, as a regional initiative or a, a regional advocacy rather than or, or on top of what Fort St. John does specifically as council. And, and, the, and I'll just mention the other advantage to the associations are that they are nonpartisan. So we work with whoever's in government. We work with all the, the MLAs that are in the legislature. So it doesn't matter to us which government is in place. We just want to make sure that whoever's in, at the provincial level, especially, hears our voice and hears our needs and, and helps us to address them. So you guys pass multiple resolutions that I would say are pretty important. These include um, consultation with local governments, enacting the Safety Amendment Act, year-round forest fire management program, and salvage logging of wildfire impacted areas. So that gets brought forward to the AGM. Um, everyone kind of gets on board, it gets voted on. What happens after that is, I guess, if everyone's in agreement, all the members of the NCLGA, if they're in agreement to these resolutions, does that then help when municipalities are approaching the province and saying, hey, these other municipalities are with us, the NCLGA, like what's the action after those resolutions kind of get talked about or passed? Right, so a lot of the things, and, and even the ones you mentioned that we are taking as resolutions this year, are issues that we've dealt with as a local government, as a community, as a city. We've, we, you know, I think we've talked about that in the past, the, the letters that we've written to the province concerning some of these issues. What happens is when we take it as a resolution and the importance of bringing that as a resolution to the NCLGA AGM, is that we can we can present that resolution there we can add our specific story to it to say this is why we need this to go forward and 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 for for nclj to advocate on behalf of us 
but what happens when you're there is as you're in in debate and discussion over the specific resolutions is another community will come and and they'll have another specific need to their community but it relates to the issue so we bring you know this issue that's a concern for us we 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 are able to to talk about why it's important in our community but the advantage is that we gather with all these other people that might have a different situation that they're trying to address. But if we could, if we could get this bigger issue resolved, so if it's consultation or if it's the Community Safety Act, whatever it is, it, it affects them differently, but it's still the same issue. And so when we're debating and voting on it, um, it just adds some of that background and strength to it. So what happens is then we vote on it. And if it looks like it's a, if, if members at, at NCLGA agree that it's a regional thing, it, it's not just a Fort St. John thing, um, they will vote for it, that this is something we need to take forward. NCLGA will then in turn uh, act on behalf of, of the region and represent us um, to the province. The other piece of it is that those resolutions that get approved and passed by the NCLGA convention go to UBCM and they all get sent to the UBCM convention, which takes place in the fall. Mm -hmm. And those same resolutions get debated there. Um, and and they, so, so a Fort St. John resolution will be presented at the provincial UBCM convention, but it will have been endorsed by this whole region. And so it will come to UBCM, it'll get debated on the floor there, and members, which is the 180 some local governments from BC that are at the convention, will talk about, and discuss and debate whether this is a provincial issue. So again, you talk about the Community Safety Act. It's something that we really could use here in this community, but I, I, I can guarantee when we get to UBCM with the rest of the provincial local government, there's going to be a lot from around the province that are saying, you know, they've got different issues, maybe specific issues, mm -hmm. but they're going to agree that this is an important issue that we need to advocate for and make sure the province knows about and, 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 and responds to. So, so, the, and so then again, it gets debated on, gets voted on. And then from there, the ones that get passed, those resolutions that get passed at, at UBCM, um, get presented to the province, every one of them. And every year we've got, uh, you know, I don't know, 150 to 200 resolutions oh, that wow. go to the province. And the province responds to each and every one of them, uh, which, is, which is good. And, and, you know, sometimes it's not the response we hope for, mm -hmm. but they do, it, those, the specific resolutions will go to the different ministries that, that oversee those, those different uh, areas of interest. And they will respond to, to us, uh, to Fort St. John regarding our um, resolutions that went forward and, and just tell us where they're at, uh, whether they agree and can do something or whether they're already acting on it or whatever it might be. So it's, a, it's the process of getting it to the province, which again is, is outside of maybe what people see in our local community, but it's, it's certainly part that we're very active in. Yeah, that's definitely what I wanted to ask because, I mean, obviously covering councils, I, I know you guys are a part of it, I know the process, but I think for the community, they, they, most people probably don't know about it. And so, yeah, it seems like a lengthy process, but it seems vital for the city because, you know, again, you talked about strength in numbers and the province is still responding back after the UBCM. It's, it's going to be huge for certain topics, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, going on to specific, uh, the, the specific um, resolutions that I had mentioned. So I feel like with the consultations in the Safety Act, that has been talked about frequently with council, um, and it's pretty straightforward. But for the year-round management and salvage logging in relation to wildfires, um, why did the city and council feel like these needed to be brought up? And are there, is there anything in place now? Um, to to tackle these, or is that exactly why you guys are bringing it up? Because there is nothing, right? And and just yeah, and I'll, I'll answer that question, but just before I do that, yeah, the, no talking about the consultation and the and the the uh, community safety act mm -hmm. again, this the, the importance of taking these as resolutions, and and as you know, we as as council have written letters regarding both of those things, and and have concerns and have specific um, uh, accounts in our own community where uh, appropriate consultation with our council with our community would have helped resolve some of the uh, unforeseen consequences that happen by just implementing things. And so, so to take them uh, again to, to, as a resolution to NCLGA and through that to UBCM, um, it, it just really reinforces the need for them to, to do these things and to address them and, and, and even get, give an explanation of, of why things are or aren't happening. As far as the, the wildfires, um, obviously, 
not not a lot of the the wildfire concern happens within city limits, mm -hmm. but uh, again, going back to that whole association piece, um, being part of an association, we are we as as a local government are also trying to advocate and 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 add strength to the voice of others who are saying this is a concern that we need to to take care of some of these issues. So so you talk about the uh, the, the the wildfires. Uh, you know we've had. Um, 2023 was was the worst uh, fire season in history, uh, and so we, we've looked uh, looked at that. We, we've looked at the fact that um, there really needs to well, uh, we've looked at the fact that there's also now very little moisture on the ground, and and the concern that this might be uh, there's a lot of worries yeah, coming into this. Yeah, and so you know you don't want to panic, mm -hmm. uh, but but why not prepare ahead of time? And so we've talked about the idea of, of managing. The, the fire danger throughout the year rather than just reacting when it happens and responding and and the province has done a good job of responding to to some of those uh, emergencies that have happened but we can we also believe that there's a that there's a strong case for for more actively managing it throughout the year so that we don't have to respond um, you look at the costs uh, you know we've always said the the cost of prevention is a lot less than the, the cost of, of response and recovery afterwards. So, so we spend some resources on prevention. Uh, we can save ourselves a lot of hassle later on. So, so th the whole active management throughout the year is, is important to us and I know it's important to our neighbors. So we think that, it, and I guess when you look at our local community, again, maybe the, the fires aren't happening right in our community, but they do affect our community. So the health and safety of our community members, we've got people that work out in those areas. We've got people that are traveling through those areas. And, and so we, we just need to raise that level of awareness again for the province and, and realize that that it's something that we can advocate for on behalf of, of all of us in, in this region and, and throughout the province, actually. Uh, speaking of, you know, planning before you know, wildfire season, uh, Canada Day fireworks. So staff came forward with a recommendation to council um, asking to pretty much cancel all fi Canada Day firework displays moving forward. Uh, it was voted down by council. It did, it did make sense, the staff's um, reasoning behind it. I mean, I believe, well, I know for sure last year the firework displays had to be canceled and then the micro grants were offered for businesses to do their own events during the day. And the city still had the festivities going on at Centennial Park. I believe it had happened, if not the year prior, the in years past before. Um, why did council decide to to vote that down? You know, it's interesting, and, and and I appreciate so much the fact that our staff is always watching to make sure that we're being efficient with our resources and and that we're doing things properly. And 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 the fact that they even brought that forward, I think, is is commendable, and and that's their job is to bring us other alternatives, other options. Our job is to look at the the overall as council to look at the overall. Um, priorities for our community and, and our strategic plan and, and what we value as a community. And so they brought forward this option because you're right, uh, we've had to cancel basically last minute uh, mm. before. And, and we've, we've realized that that, that one, that that you know, disrupts the, the celebrations because people are expecting things uh, and they don't happen, but it also impacts our, our, uh, our expenses because we do put resources into planning for it and then cancel. Bottom line is, uh, you know, we, we, we certainly listened and, and appreciated the report that they brought to us, which is what they are to do, and, and we commend them for that. In the end, I think, really, we looked at it as council, and there's a couple things. One, we, I think we, we have been very careful to, to plan uh, with health and safety in mind. Um, uh, one of our prime uh, uh, personalities of our community is that whole family and celebration and community and gathering together and and the fireworks are, are a part of that and so i think the the reasonable uh, compromise was to say you know what let's not cancel them indefinitely let's look at each each season on its own merit and uh, that's why we brought the motion forward to to look at it victoria day weekend basically and uh, recognizing that between then and, and july 1st there can be some changes and, and might still have to change but it gives us a little bit of an idea of, of what the potential is for us to cancel. And if we, can, if we know for certain that we need to cancel at that point, we can do that. Otherwise, uh, we'll keep going and, and uh, fingers crossed we were able to do that. And again, take those safety measures uh, into account so we can do it safely and uh, move forward with it. So I, I think it was just that idea of 
I was saying, let, you know, let's just cancel it forever. Um, uh, we felt like let's take it year by year and, and see. And, and if it comes to that, you know, we'll make that decision at that time. With um, when staff would be directed to, to look at um, the, the current weather conditions, do you think that's enough time so that the city doesn't have to eat that cost like they have before, like you guys have before, like last year mm -hmm. with, with canceling the firework display? Because I really liked the breakdown of the staff report where, you know, the whole thought was that the micro grants would be offered and then um, another portion of that money that would be saved from canceling the display would go to the, uh, the New Year's fireworks display. Sure. So I'm just curious if, if that's still possible or um, kind of how that will look in the future. Some of the, the preparation and planning will have already taken place by then. So some of that will already be eaten up and, and we won't recover that. And that happens with, you know, many things that we do. We, we have, um, you know, high on ice happened in February. We were just about melted right out. And so, you know, that was an, a case where, where we had made plans. We put resources into it and we may have had to cancel at the last minute. We didn't, fortunately, and, and it worked really well. Um, smaller events, we, we have... Uh, play in the park every every week throughout the summer for children and, and their parents. It's something that if it rains, it gets canceled. Um, we've put people resources into that to plan it. And, and so on a smaller level, we're, we're doing that there. This because I, I think it, it, we feel like it's such an important part of our celebration of Canada Day. Um, we're, we're willing to 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 invest some money to, to have it ready to go. And certainly if it gets canceled, there's a lot of sort of that last month leading up to Canada Day through the month of June, that, that we will save some money by, mm -hmm. by knowing that far in advance rather than maybe the week before and, and having to pull the plug. So, so we will save some money, but uh, again, I think for us, the priority is, is um, just ensuring that, that we're, we're strategic and, and we're purposeful um, and, and even just, just principled in our decision-making as far as go or no go. Yeah, I personally think it's a good decision because, I mean, I, I imagine not a lot of people in the community would be super happy with it. And I believe it was uh, Councillor Bolin had mentioned that, you know, a lot of residents might take it into their own hands. So it's kind of balancing it out with the, the costs and the community. And like you said, you know, having that family, um, you know, atmosphere during that we Canada Day long weekend, right? Yeah. Um, as we wind down here, uh, Gord, uh, moving over to city relocating casino revenue. So what are the benefits of relocating the city's revenue of over $750,000 from Chances Casino to the operating budget? Uh, from the report, it looks like it was a huge benefit to the city down the road. Uh, the relocation, or the, yeah, the relocation is expected to generate an additional $100,000 to $200,000 yearly for the city's operations and move the budget toward a surplus in the future, that seems. Like, it, it's really going to, the city is really going to benefit moving forward, especially when budget conversations happen. Yeah. You know, the, the decision to, to, to move that over to city, it, it's, it's, been a, it's been in place the way it is for, for quite a few mm -hmm. years now. Um, as, as was discussed at council, it was based on, on costs at the time. And there was some room there to, to share some of that revenue. Mm -hmm. um, costs of operations and, and some of the programming and, and the staffing that we, we have in place now are costing the city more. Uh, it just made sense to, to move that over into the city's operations cost. Um, so I think it'll really help us to, to be able to continue and be sustainable long term to, by yeah. putting that money in there. And that was from, it was originally for the Community Foundation, but the Community Foundation will still receive funding from... Um, I think it's tax aid or grant aids, tax exemptions, as well as they're going to receive some money from BC Hydro um, once the dam is finished as well, correct? Right. So, yeah, the, yeah and, and again, when you look back at the, the history of the foundation, and it's only existed for a few years, mm -hmm. but it's starting to get some legs. And part of the, the, the thinking there was to help that foundation get in place so that they can be sustainable. And, and they're getting some legs and, and becoming more sustainable on their own. And so, you know, the, I think it's not a bad time to, to change that over and change the way that money's managed. No, 100%. Well, thank you so much, Gord. Uh, before I let you go here, is there anything else you'd like to bring up? Anything else you'd like to uh, let the community know about? Something you'd like to say? No, I, I think, you know, for me, all of us on council are, are, are part of the community. And uh, I guess if, if I had one wish and maybe this is my time to express that wish. I wish that the, everyone in the community would feel like they can have a voice, that they can contribute, um, that we are 
acting in what we believe is the best interests of, of our community and our city and the sustainable long range uh, sustainability of our city. And, and so I, I just, I, you know, I, got, I, I ran for council years ago because I believed the importance of community and us coming together and, and you know, if there's an issue, we'll pitch in and, and find a solution for mm -hmm. that issue. And I, I love solution based conversations. And so, uh, it, you know, if people have input and they have that opportunity, I just, again, encourage them to get involved and, and let us know what their thoughts are. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does, and not everybody can be happy, but, uh, but we, we do our best and, and we want to work with the community to be, make it the best place it can be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Gordon. All right. Thank you.